Alright guys, welcome to video number two. Well done for making it this far. I have high hopes for you. So let's get into putting this animation together. So as you can see, I have downloaded the ultimate ball rig and I'm going to get that open. Hopefully this won't take too long. Oh, oh, it's trying. Okay. Let's have a look at this rig then. So as you can see, it is um, a ball. But it's got a few controllers on it, and if we move these around, you can see this one here controls squashy and stretchiness. We've also got um, one of those on the bottom, if you want to have the reverse effect. We have this controller in the middle that kind of controls the position of the ball. And then right at the bottom, you've got the root controller, which contains all the sort of extra controls. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by using this extra control to change the type of ball. Um, by default, you'll get this stripey ball, which is actually really good, but one of the quirks to this rig is that you can either do an animation with the ball rolling or spinning, or you can do an animation with the ball squashing and stretching, but it can't handle both. It's not set up properly for that. So as we're doing squash and stretch for this exercise, we need to make it so that this line's not here, otherwise it'll kind of shatter the illusion. So make sure that you've got this controller selected, we're then going to scroll down in the channel box and where it says ball type we're going to change it from basic to simple. If you are interested there are lots of other fancy little balls in here uh, but today we just want simple. Okay the next thing we're going to do before we get this bad boy bouncing is we're going to change this um, situation down here. It's starting at frame zero at the moment. I can't handle that. That stresses me right out. I start my animations at frame one. It's just a matter of pride. So we need to sort that out. First thing I do then is I select the number in this box here. I type one, I press enter, and then I just move my playhead over to frame one. I can now see frames one to 100 and I feel much calmer already. Brilliant. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, it's already set up properly on mine, but I don't know whether or not it's set up properly on yours. Um, we need to go into the animation preferences, which is this um, chap down here in the bottom corner that looks like he's running away from a gear that's going to kick his ass. Uh, and once you've clicked on that, it's this playback little chappy here, uh, and it's the playback speed. It should say real time. Mine's set to real time 24 frames per second. Um, yours might be real time 25 or 30 frames per second, but as long as it's real time. If it's set on play every frame, it's going to go way too fast and it's going to go mental. So we don't want that. So make sure it's on real time and then press save. Okay, we're now completely set up to do this animation. So let's get into it. Right. What I want to do, first of all, is change my view. But before I do that, I'm going to select the controller that handles the placement of the ball. And that's because I can't see it as well to select it in the side view, which I'm going to move to now. So here's the side view. I'm just going to zoom out so that I can see the ball um, and give myself plenty of space. Okay. In fact, let's move it over here a bit. So first thing I'm going to do is set position one of the ball, which is going to be up in the air. And just because it's kind of easier for uh, my maths, I'm going to move it up by about 10 units. So I'm watching the translate Y uh, number change here. I'm just going for about 10 units and once I'm happy with that on the keyboard I'm going to press S and that sets um, position 1 and now everything's going to happen from here. So the next step once I'm happy with that is I'm going to move to frame 10 and I'm then going to put the ball back in the ground position. Now here I get to tell you about one of the um, good bits about this rig. Because the way it's set up to treat the uh, the bottom of the grid as the floor, anytime we put zero back in the uh, translate Y box of the channel box, it just goes back down to the floor. So we, we'll know that it hits the floor perfectly every time as long as we put a zero in that box. So what I'm going to do now is press S again. And if I just scrub between these two keyframes, you can see the ball's coming down, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Now, as the ball bounces, it loses uh, momentum. So the energy that it's got, some of it dissipates into sound uh, and 
heat and other types of energy. So it's not going to bounce up to the same high. And it's also not going to take as long to get to that height. So it's taken, in this case, nine frames to come down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take six frames. So I'm going to go to frame 16 to go back up. And I'm going to go up about six units. That'll do. And then I'm going to press S again. Now, one important thing to get a ball bounce looking convincing is that a ball should always take exactly the same amount of time to come down as it took to go up. So it's taken six frames to go up. So now we're going to take six frames to come back down. So I'm going to move to frame 22. That is adding six on, isn't it? Yes. Okay, and then I'm going to put zero in that box, back on the ground, press S, and then I've now got the ball coming down, going up, coming back down. So far, so good. Now I need to take some more frames off it and some more high off it. So this time, I'm going to go four frames along. So that's going to take me to frame 26. And I'm going to go about four units up. Maybe just below four units. And then I'm going to set that. And then four frames later, which will be frame 30. Back to zero. Press S. And set that keyframe. Okay, so we're just taking more height and more time off it each time. Okay, so now I'm going to go three frames. One, two, three. And I'm going to go up to about two and a half this time. Press S. And then I'm going to move another three frames on. Take me to 36. I'm going to go to zero and press S. And then I'm going to go another two frames on. Take me to 38. And I'm going to move up to about maybe 1.4-ish. And set that. Frame 40, I'm going to go back down to zero. And set that. And then I'm going to start moving in one frame at a time just to get the little bounces at the end. So frame 41, I'm going to go up to about just below one. And then the one after that, back to zero. And I'm just setting each one of these as I go. So the one after that, I'm going to go up to about 0.5. And I'm going to set that. And the one after that, I'm back on zero. And set that and then I'm going to do maybe two more of these little bounces. So I'm going to go to 0 0.2 this time. Back to zero and set. And then a really, really tidgy one just at the end. Maybe just below 0 0.1. And then back down to the ground on the final one and press S. So that's taken me up to frame 48. Okay, so if we look at what... Um, effect that's achieved. I'll just play that on a loop. If I press play now, that's what we have so far. Not very convincing, uh, and that's because there's some more work needed on this in the next step. We're going to play with the graph editor. So, so far so good. If you've got something that looks like this, you're onto a winner. But meet me in the next video where we're going to fine tune the motion uh, of this ball to get it to look a lot more convincing, to really give some weight to the ball. So keep in mind that I'm uploading a new video in this series each week. And if you don't want to miss any videos, make sure you are subscribed. And I'll see you in the next one.